until you drive down that street, you really can't imagine just how horrible that was. It was more than a disaster. It was more than anybody could comprehend. Life changes. I mean, one day they were a functioning community, and the next day it was just gone. These people are at the bottom. A week ago, they may have been well-to-do, they may have been very poor, but today they are the least of these. After Katrina hit, you know, the entire nation was watching the images on TV. And my friend and I were, were watching those things and we, we felt pretty helpless. We didn't know what to do. And my friend, he, he knew what to do. He just said, well, we're going to go down there. I thought, well, that's kind of crazy, but okay, let's do it. We have lots of partners out there, and I think our greatest strength is our people. I did some disaster response in Burlington, Mississippi. Um, we built a house. Our first property was a, a gentleman that was so stunned by the damage that he couldn't go back. So we tried to clean the place up enough that, that he would feel like he was going back home and not to a disaster site. When you go to an area where there's a disaster and people have lost everything and they just need hope well despite your own personal struggles you find that somehow you're able to reach down inside of yourself and and offer them that it didn't take any skill to uh, be able to pick up debris and put it in a pile. It doesn't take any skill to move logs once they've been cut down. It takes no skill to be able to hand out water and food. It doesn't take any skill to um, just be there and be present in the midst of someone's pain. We can help them feel like they have a normal life again because a lot of people don't. She was so overwhelmed, she started crying, and I told her, you know, we'd be here all week if she needed anything else to come back, and she was just so happy to have things like paper towels and toilet paper and toothpaste, and I think just seeing how much it meant to her um, individually, and then thinking on a large scale how much it was helping everybody else, that was probably the high point of me being here. I think that it just made me more aware that we really were called to be servants. In the past, things like that would happen and you'd say, oh, those poor people. I'm glad people are going to help and suddenly we were the ones with the time to do it. Because of the love of Jesus Christ and, and the way our church has, has taught us discipleship, uh, then we have no strangers. I am more convinced than ever that the church is about others. That's why God put us here. That's what the community of faith is about, others. And so it's changed me forever. It'll change your life. If you feel out of place, go. You'll find your place. It will, it will change your life and it will deepen your life. Uh, that will give meaning to, to more of what you do and what you hear. So I tell people, just try it one time, and I'll guarantee you, <laughs> you will like it. The hardest trip is the first when you have all this, this self-doubt. I don't know what to do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do when I get there. But when you get there, the need becomes apparent. You'll find skills in yourself that you might not realize that you had. And just taking that first step to get in the car and go, that's the hardest step, but the most important one. And you'll go and you'll spend a day traveling and four hard days working and a day getting back home and you'll say to yourself, this is the best week I've ever spent in my life. I don't know where you are or how you feel or what you do or what the situation in your life is, but I do know one thing, you're needed. You're needed desperately by someone else. And I would hope and I would pray that you would respond to that need anytime you see it or hear of it.